let's go back to my freshman year and sophomore year when most of the social activities, if you were not fraternity or not sorority, were all part of regular campus activities. Okay? And there were sponsored activities that were sponsored by the whole school. You know, pep rallies in the fall with the football team and uh, other social events that uh, would be campus-wide. And then they also had, in the spring, a big May Day festival. Okay. And there's lots of pictures, I'm sure, in yearbooks that would show those years when they would put on the May Day festival and dance around the maypoles and the guys and gals would dress up and they'd build big backgrounds, wood plywood and have a background of a castle looking. So May Day was a big event for the spring season, so to speak. Uh, it, was, it was fun. An ancient tradition that the school, for some reason, before I got there, had started to use as a spring event. Um, when you got into fraternity life and sorority life, then the fraternities would sponsor social events at the frat houses. And of course, back then, there were only three fraternities, Phi Mu Delta, Bond and Key, which I think became Lambda Chi Alpha later, but Bond and Key was a local fraternity only, not national. Okay. okay, and then Theta Chi was the other branch of a national fraternity. Uh, there were three sororities, but back then, no sorority houses. The sororities had rooms assigned in the basement of Cybert Hall. So they had their own private space, but not a house. Okay? So that was the arrangement that the school had decided. And of course, the sororities would go through their forms of hazing and initiation, as would the fraternities. But, uh, so the sororities really couldn't sponsor on-site social events except within their own sorority. So there was no way they were going to invite one of the other fraternities to come and have a social event in their room. So the gals used to love being invited to, obviously, a fraternity party. But you had to remember that when you were in a fraternity house owned by the fraternity, you were still part of campus. Okay. And you had to follow all the rules at the frat house that you had to follow on campus. No drinking. And all fraternity parties had to be chaperoned by a faculty member. And the hours for the parties would generally be from 8 to midnight. And no drinking, as I said. But we would have great parties. We would have dancing. We would have, uh, maybe if some members were good in instruments, they would play and we would sing and dance and socialize and have food and beverage. Everybody followed the rules because you had a faculty advisor on premise for the party. And if you broke the rules, no more parties that you could sponsor. So at Phi Mu, we would have maybe three parties a year. Uh, some, one of them usually tied into an after event, after a football game. And uh, Bonding Key would follow the same pattern and Theta Chi would follow the same pattern. Now, not every year that you would have the same number of parties, but it was a good time to bring a date and socialize at the frat house. Well, we would, we would often theme a party, like in the fall, after a football game, we'd have a harvest party, okay, and decorate the frat house with harvest, looking, you know, bales of hay and pumpkins and all those usual decorations. We'd all, ha we'd all, at our meetings, elect a decorating committee, decide on the theme and go through and implement the parties. The challenge was finding the team who was going to clean up after the party. And then no one wanted that job. But you had to rotate and you had to take turns. You had to maintain, at least we did, maintained our Phi Mu house property and made sure we were taking care of the place we were living in. 
Uh, we at FIMU Delta, we had two faculty advisors. So one or the other would volunteer the chaperone. And sometimes both of them would come. I don't remember how the other fraternities managed that, but only what we did. Have you stayed in contact with any of your fraternity brothers since you graduated? Yeah, oh yeah. The other part of keeping in contact with fellow graduates was through our five-year reunions, not just for the fraternity, but for the whole class. And I don't know whether I mentioned the size of our class. No, you didn't. We came in in the fall of 1951 with 110 students. Co-ed. Uh, 20 of those students, however, were females that were coming in under a certificate program, not a degree program. Back then, we had a two-year administrative assistant slash secretarial plan for girls who could come in and be certified after two years of business training and secretarial training to go out and work in business. That sounds like a great program. It was a great program for those who didn't, didn't want to go full year and get a full degree, who were interested in that kind of work. But it was a very practical application to be certified and take your certification directly to an employer and it made it easy to get hired. Now, I guess that was eliminated sometime in the 60s. I don't know for sure. But 20 of the young women in my class that came in left after the junior year, so immediately our class size shrunk significantly. And then after our sophomore year, we had a couple of transfers out. Some of them left because they had taken a science course that we had an agreement with two other universities, like the University of Pennsylvania, if you wanted to go into the medical profession or the veterinary profession, you could take your preliminary science courses here at Susquehanna and then leave after three years and go on and continue and get your degree from the University of Penn as an example. So we lost a few students who went into the medical field from our science program. But by the time our degrees were awarded, there were 57 that graduated. So other than depression years, we were one of the smallest classes. An unusual story of applying to get into Susquehanna. Uh, I told this to Tyler Herzog when he came down for a visit. There was one student who was a transfer student who I became good friends with because he was from Philadelphia. I'm from Philadelphia originally, okay? Jim Gormley had worked and tried to work toward his college degree by being a day student at Temple University. So after he got so many credits there, uh, someone where he was working part-time to be able to afford to get to college said, well, have you ever heard of Susquehanna University? <laughs> well, Jim had never heard of Susquehanna University. This fellow where he works says, go up. Go up, you know, get an experience other than a city school. So Jim was a little bit older because he had been working all those years to gradually go through Temple. So he drove up on a, uh, like the third week in August to Susquehanna. And there was nobody around except the football team had been back for practice. The offices were closed. It was a Saturday. So he started asking around anybody he saw, um, you know, how can I apply to transfer to Susquehanna? Fortunately, he met someone who said, oh, go right up to Faculty Row and knock on Dean Galt's door and see if Dean Galt is there. He'll be happy to talk to you. He knocked on Dean Galt's door. Dean Galt welcomed him in. They had their interview for admission in Dean Galt's living room. And what Jim had brought with him as far as his credits already earned, he was told, report next week for freshman orientation. Wow, that's amazing. That's the most unusual story I've ever heard for a college student being accepted at a university 
by the dean in the dean's living room a week before school starts. What made you decide to come to Susquehanna? Uh, because I was searching for a, a place to go outside of the city, so I didn't have to be a commuting student, but I couldn't afford certain school costs. So it was a matter of exploring schools that were affiliated with the Lutheran Church, okay. Muhlenberg and Susquehanna. Fortunately, the rector or pastor at our church had just come two years before and when my parents started talking to him about recommendations for colleges, he said, I'll take you up to my alma mater. He had graduated from Susquehanna in 1940. So we jumped in his car and we took a long drive. It took us four and a half hours from Philadelphia because it was no, there was, the turnpike wasn't finished and the Susquehanna Trail was one lane each way. And then we got halfway here and it was a detour. So we had a detour out through country roads and back again. So it was a four and a half hour trip. We got here, we had our interview, not knowing what was going to happen. But the final decision, Muhlenberg or here, was Muhlenberg told me that I could earn a working scholarship if I survived my first full year. You notice that word survive? Muhlenberg was considered very high scholastically back then. Okay? So they were putting it in your ear that you better come here to work. The interview with Susquehanna was not that quite extreme in the conversations. If after your first semester you pass through, you could qualify for a working scholarship your second semester. So the final decision ended up being financial. Other than it looked like a great place to be instead of the city. And I had one senior female student who had been from our church previously, and she was still here. So I was able to talk to her and get a recommendation that it's a good place to be. But the challenge was it's 140 miles from home, and freshmen can't have cars. How was I going to get to and fro? So my freshman year, a couple of times it was train, and a couple of times it was parents coming to pick me up. Where did you take the train to? Harrisburg, and then Harrisburg to Philadelphia. There was a line that ran the Susquehanna Valley back then. Finally, in my sophomore year, another transfer from Temple University from my old high school in Philadelphia, he transferred up here, and because he was now in our sophomore year, he had a car. So thankful Ed Barrett came to Susquehanna, and now I had transportation my last three years. Do you mind sharing why you decided to come in again today, since you've been to one of our harvests in the past? Because I got a chance to meet people like you, and have fun, and maybe, hopefully, meet some of my fellow classmates. But at this point in time, I'm so blessed to be here. Never thought I'd be here at age 85. Please always take a program in education. I hear too many stories through other colleges, mainly big colleges and universities, where they're becoming indoctrinated, not educated. Education means I learn all sides and then I can decide for myself. But I hear too many stories of other options. So anybody I meet who's coming into junior year in high school through my church or other contacts, I say, please search out small schools. And of course, recommend Susquehanna as a place to search. To me, you get a more complete environment. And I had the blessing of having average class size, eight to 10. I was a liberal arts major and I switched after my Sophomore year, I decided I don't think I'm going to go that way, and I switched to business for my last two years. Okay. That may, gave me a lot of heavy credits I had to carry my last year by switching. So where all my classmates in their senior year are taking 12 credits, I still had to take 16 and 18. But I made it and was lucky enough to then achieve based on what I acquired here.